Hello everybody and welcome to a new guide on X4 where we bring you a guide through Tides of Avarice. So if you're new to the game, this is where you want to start. If you are a returning player and you may want a bit of a de-rusting of your flight skills, then you can check this out as well. But this is going to be mainly targeted at those who don't know how to fly a ship. You may jump into the game and be overwhelmed all of a sudden. So we're going to go through a few things so it's a little easier for you to understand. And hopefully get you on your way to, under uh, to understanding the ship and enjoying Tides of Avarice. So without further ado, let's talk about your HUD and what's going on in the HUD. So let's start off with the important bits, which is this central section here. Now this has had a bit of an upgrade in 5.0. So if you are new to 5.0, you've had a break. This will be completely new to you. So let's start off from top to bottom. This bit here is your speed. You see there's a little blue icon here and a little orangey red icon here. Currently, we're sat at zero speed, so that's where the red icon is. If we go in reverse, you can see it drops below, and above, obviously, it goes above. And that's your max speed there. So that's your max speed. Next, you have your hull, which is very important. If that's not coloured in, you're dead. Next is your shield. Not only does your shield act as a shield, but you can also tap into the energy of your shields to give you boost, which is done by pressing tab. That gives you an instant fast forward speed, uh, great for getting you out of you know sticky situations, but bear in mind it does take from your shields, and your shields take time to regenerate, and they're what's protecting your hull. So don't use too much of that. Next you have your current speed, 0 meters a second. FLR3 uh, basically indicates that you're currently carrying three flares, which are your countermeasures to missiles, so if you get missiles targeting you, you know, you've got three to defend yourself with. Next, we have some little icons here. Now, the slightly blue icon means it is kind of partially active, but not actually doing anything. So, you're targeting stuff. You've got your anti-roll. You've got your anti-collision, which kind of helps to try and stop you from colliding stuff and stuff like that. Um, the other two are blank because you're not using them at the moment. Now, let's talk about things like rolling. You see that? It's now highlighted because it's anti-rolling. So, it's putting it, self-writing itself, basically. See that there? Uh, same if you're trying to get anti-collision, that'll start lighting up as well. I want to go into a little bit more detail over these in a second, but let's talk about the rest of the HUD. So here on your left is your secondary weapons. We carry no secondary weapons on this ship, so they are completely empty, as you can see there. If The little icon there that's lighting up, the little dot, indicates which group we have, and we'll talk about groups in another video. See nothing there. On our right is our primary weapons one two three and four you see if i press two three and four as they're not actually aligned with weaponry systems you see that our weaponry systems go dark which means we won't fire number one you see it does give you a little bit of an indicator if you do but number one and you see we've got weapon systems again you also see as we fire this little bar here fills up this is like your heat signature when this max really almost a shot when this reaches the end it'll stop your weapon system from firing until they dissipate the heat Next, we have the map or the radar. The radar is in a line with your ship. You can see as we rotate up and down, side to side, the map also rotates on the same axis you do. You'll see if you've got guidances, you'll see there's a little orange line there that's guiding us to a little point that I've set ready to go. And you'll also see it's got the axis as well minus Z, minus X, plus X, and plus Z. Obviously, you don't see that if you go this way. There's no other axis. The main axis we work on is the X and Z axis. However, there are things that now allow you to work on the other axis. But we'll talk about that at a later stage. And finally, we have our comms here. All of your messages, information, or missions or anything like that come up on your comms here. You'll also see some little interactions on the right-hand side as well. If you're actually talking to people, um, I'll try and target somebody here. You're flying past. Let's have a look. Can I aim you? There you are. Uh, I can't tell. Magpie. There you go. Sentinel. So you get your information and everything like that. And if you do Ghost try to talk to him, you can see that you get a little video there. Um, goodbye. Goodbye. You get your information there of the ships and stuff like that, which, again, we'll talk more into detail about in a later video. But let's start talking about things like what you have Boa. on the central section of the HUD. You can see now we have an active target. So now our active targeting system is now highlighted. You can see that there. But these two are still not aligned. What are they? Well, 
They are number one. Empty space. Autopilot, which you can see is now active. Autopilot disengaged. You can see autopilot is disengaged, and the other icon has now lit up. The other icon. There we go. It's just slow us down. The other icon there is your flight assistance. So it's assisting us in flight, which slows us down, dampens us, and stuff like that. Now. If you find it weird that when you put the brakes on, it stops you, you can stop that by literally pressing control and space bar. You see, auto flight assist has now been disabled. You see, this little icon here has now been completely disabled. But if we go forward and then drop the speed down, you see it keeps the speed set up. You also see, we no longer get auto roll either. Everything is completely turned off, so you will no longer align yourself to the axis you have free reign to do as you see fit. So, that's it. You can do whatever you want, and it won't try to align itself. Now, you'll also see that when I take off my cursor, oh, sorry, when I apply my cursor, we'll just slow us down. There we go. By pressing the backspace, you can completely stop. And also, now that I've activated my cursor again and no longer controlling my ship with my mouse, You'll see this icon here has ended. It's now gone blank. Reactivate. And the ship now moves with my cursor. And that little icon is lit up. This is your mouse steering. It tells you that it says press shift and spacebar to deactivate steering mode, which is your mouse steering. There is an alternative to this. If you don't like the little bit of a lag, so you can see where... The more I take it on and off screen, the tighter the ship turns. You can have direct steering. If you press Shift and N, you'll see now your icon is completely gone. But the ship will respond directly to your mouse movements. I apologize if it's a little bit sickly there. But you can see that if I pull my mouse forward and back, it will directly respond. Rather than a little bit of a delay there. But if you prefer doing it that way, Shift and N, you get full control of your ship. Some people like it for dogfights. You also got, you know, if you've got it where you've disengaged your flight assist, you can see you can just basically control your ship however you want. However, for the purposes of the majority of this guide, we want to keep everything nice and simple because it's just a little bit easier to try and explain and do things whilst everything is automatically aligning itself so I can work off a level plane for anybody who does struggle with controlling the ships in such a way. So everything will be done as is also i do prefer it this way myself personally so that's your flight controls that's a little example of what you can do and how they all activate this is just basically shift and space bar for on and off as i've mentioned now let's talk about actually moving your ship around q and e is your roll and you can do nice lovely barrel rolls Again, depending on your thrust will depend on the speed of how you do that, but things like that we'll get into later. W, A, S, and D do not make you go forward back, but they do make you go side to side. So A and D allow you to strafe left to right. W and S allow you to strafe up and down. Remember, this is a sandbox that is open, so you can go up and down. It is not linear. Look at that, awesome. Z will do increments of speed in reverse and x does increments of speed in forward you can also do the same for speed with your mouse scroll if you have one scrolling forward and backwards adjust the speed you can have a full reverse which i currently don't have aligned if you do want to be able to put things into full reverse you can set it up in the settings so you can set a key to have you in full reverse you do have a full stop, however, so if you're at full speed and you want to stop it instantly, press your backspace and the ship will stop. Keep hold of it and it will slow it all the way down. If you do not keep hold of it and you have things like, uh, if I turn off my flight assist, there we go. So you speed forward, you can see that it will automatically slow it down. So if you do want to stop it from going like, you know, and turn off the assist, you can see you can control your level of speed by doing it that way. Oh, bear that in mind, it won't keep it going. Okay. So, that's the basics of actually flying your ship. But what can we actually do with the ship? Oh, well, there's quite a lot you can do. 
Let's talk about firing your weapons. Two ways to fire your weapons. You can fire where your aim cursor is, which is this here. So wherever this points. You see the little blue dots there. They will try and trace the target. However, if you want to lead the target on, middle mouse button, click it. You can see my weapon systems will track where my mouse is and allow me to fire. If you're not firing anything, it will warn you. Make sure you've got an active weapon system going. If you're carrying secondary weapons, the L key fires your secondary weapons. We do not carry secondary weapons, so I can't show you at this stage. You can also look around your ship if you really want using the D-pad. Look at that. Awesome. However, while you're looking around, the weapon systems do not track where you're looking. The cursor only goes a certain angle, which is here. That's the arc of your weapon system, so bear that in mind. So again, there's a couple of bits with weaponry systems there. What else can we do? Deploy countermeasures. Shift and C. Deploys countermeasures. Do we have a look at what that looks like? Yeah, why not? Countermeasures. It's pretty awesome. How did I get this view? Look at this. We can see your 3D of your model. Your ship. Pressing the F1 key brings you always to your cockpit. F2 brings you a locked third person. It's locked to your ship. You can still see your targeting area with your mouse. Press F2 again. It now gives you an unlocked version of that lock. Your weapon system still trace where your mouse cursor is. And so does your flight. If I start to fly with my mouse control, you can see my steering acts on the ship. However, it doesn't act on where I put the cursor in comparison with the ship. It's in comparison with where it is on the screen. Center of the screen, you stop dead. Move to the right of the screen. Your ship moves around to the right and left. Up and down. Bear that in mind. Weapon systems do the same as well. You can see if I actually try and aim, you can see they're looking around everywhere. Bear that in mind. But with it unlocked, you can look around with your numpad. You can zoom in and out with the plus and minus keys. You can get a good look of your ship and the external view. F3 does nothing because we've not selected anything. As you can see, it's making that bleeping noise. But it does do something. Let's go back into the HUD. Let's move ourselves over here, and I want to actually look at what that. Sh uh, there we go. I can't target that. Boa. I want to know what that looks like. Press F3, and you can have a good look at the ship. Press F3 again, and it gives you an unlocked version of that lock. So you can see the ship up close. Looks pretty smart, doesn't it? S4 gives you an unlocked control. You can see there. You can look around. Where's our ship? We can't see our ship. Press F1. You can see because I had the steering mode on, it was trying to move the ship at the same time. But there you go. So that's how you can look around in the ships. You can do things like targeting enemies and stuff like that. However, we've got to be careful because if we start targeting enemies, we may end up accidentally shooting them. So if you want to have a practice of this, I recommend disabling your weapon systems. Like so. So now if you accidentally target something you want to fire, you won't be able to fire. Okay, so to target an enemy, if we press Shift and E, it will target a hostile. You can just slightly hear there's a little key there. means we can't find anything. There's no enemy target. We can target random targets, which is nearest to us, by pressing Magpie. T. Vanguard. That's our nearest target. Then all you do is just click off the screen to remove the target. Buzzard, Sentinel. Target, press T again, and it'll it will move around some of the weapons, but it's it, it, sorry some of the targets, but it is whatever's nearest to you at the time. And then to Falcon target Vanguard, new target. Boa Falcon Buzzard you see, Buzzard. We're now Vanguard, rotating through the targets. Peregrine Sent Falcon. Vanguard. It's your page up and page down keys, so that's, that takes you through all of your targets. However, we got to be careful because if you use that, it's going to target friendly targets, so be wary of that. Now, there is a way in this game to target surface elements. 
I obviously can't show you that because the ships aren't close enough, but if you want to take out specific things like engines, turrets, and stuff like that, use your home and end keys, and you'll target specific things on the ships. Right, so that's the basics of flying your ship. What else can we do with the state ship? Well, there are a couple of other things we can do. You notice when we used autopilot, the ship started speeding off at a ridiculous speed. We have four modes that we can use. Mode number one is travel mode. Shift and one brings this orange little overview. And you see our ship is now beyond that little marker, indicating that we are in travel mode. Travel mode also keeps you going at a ridiculously fast speed, even though you're facing the wrong way. You see the stars are going in a odd direction. All you do to adjust that is face that way, and your flight assist will slowly bring you down. You can bring it down a lot quicker by bringing your speed down like that. Shift 2 brings a little purpley glow. This is scan mode, so if you go up close to pelican something... Sentinel. Let's get close to this pelican here. If you want to scan a pelican, you can do it one of two ways. The first way is getting up nice and close with your little scan mode, and it will automatically scan. And you'll see that you're getting things of different colours. That there is shielding, turrets, old defensive equipment will bring that kind of colour. You see, as we go further away, the colouring disappears. You'll also notice the ship's trying to rotate itself. The ship orientates to your target. You see now the colouring's gone because we've done the scan it's all finished. Let's see if we can get... There we go. You see now we're targeting components on the ship. And we can rotate around until we find... Actually, I want to take that shield out. So now if I shoot, I will take out that shield generator alone whilst leaving the rest of the ship fairly safe. And that allows you to uh, work on things when you want to start boarding and stuff like that. So it's going to be important to remember that. And I know it's a lot of information, but hopefully you'll have this video as your reference. And I'm giving you, trying to give you as much information about flying a ship as possible. So you can have a watch over it a couple of times and pick up on certain things. Whilst we're up close here, we'll talk about matching target speed as well. If you press Shift and X, you will match your target speed. Number Salt. We will be scanning your we're being scanned. Our next thing we can do is we can press Shift and F, and it will target uh, scan our target. However, we've not really got anything that we can scan on it. Scan but... complete. I wish you good profits, pilot. Oh, that's excellent. Thank you very much. You see, there. This isn't something we can actually. There we go. There it is. Yes. Yes. Scan at your leisure. You'll see that we're scanning them, just as that police scan does. You can't scan a specific item, which is why I wasn't doing it at first, so I apologise about that. But I, mean, I thought I was targeting the whole thing. You can continue to do that. What that does now is tells you all of the information you need from that. It also tells you what storage it's got. And you can see it's flying, it's got its hulls and shield at 100%. And it's telling you who the commander is. So it's a part of the Talada shipyard, and he's docking at an unknown station. You'll also see that we're currently in his wake. So we're actually traveling with him. So you'll see that even though our speed is... Well, our speed is actually zero. But if we look this way, you'll see we're actually traveling at a fair rate of knots. To break away from that, just pull yourself out of his slipstream. And then off he goes. So mode number three. Shift and three. You get this blue little look. You can see there in the left hand, uh, bottom left, long range scan mode. If you press your secondary fire, you will do this charge beam. You see the red line? This is overcharge. Therefore, it will do... <laughs> so, you want to aim so it's about... There. And it sends out this beam. What this beam does is it basically picks up of anything in the system. Anomalies, stations, etc. The shorter the charge, the less of the beam. The longer the charge, the further away it goes. There we go. You can see that. It'll pass it through and you'll see it, it will pick up on things like that. Oh, wow. Points of interest will be there. So if you fly over there, there'll be something over there. Maybe a lockbox, maybe a data vault, maybe an anomaly, maybe who knows what it is. It could be a bomb for all as I know. But points of interest do flash up that orange and then you can fly over to it. Mode number four, which you won't have unlocked, but you may have already heard of, is called Seta Drive or Seta Drive. This 
is basically a way for you to speed up the game whilst you're at relative speed. So, for example, I'm at zero meters a second, but I want everything else around me to go faster. I will press... There may have been something nearby. Sometimes it does disable the seater. So let's try again. So now we get this little white over us. And you can see that the little cursor in the left hand side. This tells you that activity is happening. You also see that missions also have times. And you're speeding up the time of everything. You see the ships are flying around us at crazy speeds. Now if I decide I want to start flying. If I fly at 9 meters a second or whatever speed it is. You'll see everything looks like it's going really fast, but I'm only still traveling at 210 meters a second. So our travel mode won't engage while we're using the seat to drive. But if you're waiting for something economy-wise, or you want the game to speed up a little bit faster, once you unlock the seat to drive, then you can do that. However, to unlock that, you need components and building, and we'll go into that in another video. Let's disable it for now. You see everything goes back to normal, happy days. So that really is the majority of the basics of flight. However, what if you want to get off your ship and do something around the station? Well, let's go ahead and fly Peregrine. through this jump this gate. Jump gate. Grand. jump gate here because I know there's a station right by the jump gate. And I'll show you how to interact with a station and get out of your ship. So you can do the other part of the game, which is getting on your feet and doing some bits. Okay, so you've decided that no matter whatever station it is, I'm using the defense platform as an example. But if you want a shipyard or you want to do trading or something like that, you decide you want to get to a station. So, if you want to get close to a station, drop out of flight mode. And you'll see as you get a little bit closer, you'll be able to initiate docking with it. Now, we should be a little bit far away from here. Good. Right, no, nope, we're just about in range. So you can see once you get to about, I think it's about 8 kilometers you can request docking, which is the shift docking D. Docking aborted. Shift D also aborts the docking, as you can see there. Docking granted. When you get granted docking, you get these little green icons flashing here. They are giving you an idea of where the docking platform is. So if you go like this, you'll see... Oh, it must be somewhere over there. So, you fly towards the uh, little blue markers. There's a bit of boost. You can see that, you see the anti-collision started triggering because I was getting close to the station. And you see that they kind of hover around here. This tells us that, oh, our ducking is over here. Now, if you play Tides of Average, you've probably got a docking station. Uh, sorry, a docking computer on your, on your ship. However, if you don't, and I'll try and do this without triggering docking, you'll see you'll get... Let's get a little bit closer. There you go. There it is. So I've got to be careful because my docking computer will overtake. You see, you get some little icons here. These are all your angles, basically. You see, we rotate around here. It moves that angle there up and down. Brings this little blue arrow closer. This is guiding you towards your platform. So you see, if I move a little bit closer, it automatically engages. The advantages of having a docking Successfully computer. Docked. However, if you don't, you've got to make sure they're all aligned and it will land you perfectly. Now, welcome. the final part of this video, and I do apologize, it's a little bit long, but I want to get everything to do with the ship flight out and out of the way so we can get into some juicy bits. But the next one is your basically what you can do whilst you're at a station, but you can also do whilst you're in your ship in space as well. You can get up. You notice it also gives us what the command is. Control D allows you to get up. Of course, I press Shift D, which undocks me. Docking granted. Because I'm an idiot. Control D allows you to get Kid. up. If you take command of your ship again, you get that menu back up. And I'm not going to talk about menus in today's episode. Trade is a completely separate thing. We'll talk about later. Ship information. If you press Shift uh, Shift Enter at any time, it will give you your ship information. These three, we don't have anything to do with. We've got our modes, which is the travel mode, which we can obviously travel while we're here. Scan mode, you can scan whilst you're on board and docked. Long range scan mode, you really can if you want to. And obviously, if you've got access to the setter drive, then you also have that as well. Gives you the um, shortcuts again. And our final one, which I pressed before, was Shift D to undock. As you can see, 
if you make a mistake like I did, just press it again. Docking granted. And it will automatically pull you back down if you're in range still. Final thing to do before we go is talk about walking. W, A, S, and D now becomes your walking ability. You can crouch by pressing C. You can jump slightly by pressing spacebar. Jumping is useless. Well, that's pretty much it while you're on a station. If you want to run, don't press Shift W, because you don't do anything. It stops you from moving anywhere. Shift D also brings up that. Shift F, sorry. S. Shift S brings up your save. Shift D takes you back to your ship. So if you forget about that, and you're like teleporting back to your ship, and you're like, well, what's going on? That's fine. To run, double tap W, and you will run. You can alter that in the settings if you so wish. To have it where you always run. Some people like prefer that. I sometimes just like to chill out if I'm wandering around. But when you're finished, just press Shift D and you go back to your ship. If you've got multiple ships on board and you haven't come from a ship, it will not work. You must be actively involved with a ship for it to teleport you back to that ship. I hope this has allowed you to be able to fly around in your ship. As I say, I know it's a lot of information, but I wanted to get all of the information to do with flying your ship out on a video so you can enjoy it. And you can keep going back to it and learning little bits and bats and maybe you followed along with the video so you know how to fly. If you've liked this, then make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment in the comment section if you would rather I do videos that are broken down into a little bit more of a like little snippety information. Then I will make sure that happens in the future. Just let me know in the comment section. But hopefully the information is there for you all to enjoy. And hopefully you now are able to fly your ship around in X4. But... Until next time, everybody, take care for now, and I shall see you all on the next one. Bye-bye for now.